Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Over the years, there have been some Formula 1 drivers that have famously switched to IndyCar. From the past, there are names such as Nigel Manso and Emerson Fittipaldi, and in more recent years, we have drivers like Marcus Erickson and Romain Grosjean that have done so. While these drivers have seen success in IndyCar, not all Formula 1 drivers do. Today, we'll be looking at 10 drivers that competed in Formula 1, but had either a short or unsuccessful stint in IndyCar, so perhaps you may have forgotten them over the years. Before getting into it, though, if you enjoy the video, then please give it a like or share the video, and if you want to see more similar content, then you can subscribe to the channel. The first driver we'll be looking at is Bruno Giacomelli. Giacomelli raced in Formula 1 from 1977 to 1983, and then again with a disastrous life program in 1990. He had one podium which came in Las Vegas in 1981, but did also lose out on a potential win at Watkins Glen the year prior when his car broke down after leading the first 31 laps. In between his two Formula 1 stints, he had a brief stop over in an Indy car, competing in races in 1984 and 1985. He made his debut at Long Beach in 1984 for Theodore and qualified 9th but retired early and didn't race again until the season's finale that year at Laguna Seca, this time with Patrick racing and finished 8th. He then returned to Patrick Racing for 1985 and raced in all the road and street courses in addition to the oval at Sonair. He had some solid performances over the years starting often towards the back half of the top 10 and started as high as 3rd at Tamiami Park and had some decent race results as well with his best being a 5th at the Meadowlands and a 6th at both Mid-Ohio and Laguna Seca. That will be the end of his IndyCar career though as he raced in sports cars the next few years before his ill-fated return to Formula 1 with life. Christian Danner raced in Formula 1 from 1985 to 1989, but was never really given a car in which he could show exactly what he was capable of. He later raced in IndyCar throughout the 1990s, and while he was never a full-time driver, he stayed around quite a while. He raced in 8 races with Euro Motorsport in 1992, including the last 6 races of the season, and a further 3 races with the team in 1993. He scored his only points in that time frame with an 11th place finish at Road America, and then for 1994, he was involved with the startup of the Project Indy team, and also ran a couple races with them. He finished 12th in both of his starts at Detroit and Road America, and then at the season opener at Miami in 1995, he had a career best finish of 7th. He then did one more race that year at Detroit in which he finished in 22nd, but it wasn't until 1997 when he returned again and made his final 3 starts. He raced with Coyne, then and scored his final point with a 12th at Detroit, and had his last race at Vancouver in which he was classified in 23rd. Bertrand Gasho is most famous for allowing Michael Schumacher to make his Formula 1 debut at Spa in 1991, but he returned to Formula 1 in 1992 with Venturi, and then Pacific in 1994 and 1995. In the year in between in 1993, he had a one-off race in an IndyCar. For the race in Toronto, Dick Simon Racing needed a late replacement for Lynn St. James, and Gasho was the driver they went with. He actually had a fairly solid weekend in which he qualified in 15th, and then was fighting to get in the top 10 early in the race, but he then received a penalty in the first pit stop sequence for attempting to enter the wrong pit, effectively ending his chance of fighting any of the front runners. However, he was still able to finish 12th, earning him a single point, but he would never race an IndyCar again. Michele Alboroto had a long career in Formula 1 competing from 1981 to 1994, and the majority of his racing career after that up to his death was in sports cars. In 1996, though, he also competed in the new Indy Racing League. He signed with Team Scandia for the year to compete in both IMSA and the IRL, and had some decent performances finishing 4th at the series' first race at Walt Disney, and then 8th at the second race in Phoenix. He retired early from the Indy 500, though, after qualifying 12th, which placed him 11th in the points for the series' inaugural season. He then competed in the two remaining races that were during the 1996 calendar year on the 1996-1997 season, and put in some solid performances again. He had his best qualifying in the IndyCar with a second in Loudoun, and then converted that to a third-place finish, and then at his final race at Las Vegas, he only started 18th, but then climbed up to 5th in the race. Despite the solid results, he would only compete in sports cars after that, but when he considered that one of the reasons for creating the IRL was to give young Americans a chance to compete in Indy cars, Alvarado racing in the series does seem to be a bit of a strange fit. After competing in his final Formula 1 race in 1994, 
J.J. Leto competed in touring cars and sports cars over the next few years before making a switch to kart with Hogan Racing in 1998. Hogan hadn't put together the strongest results over their couple of years as an independent team, but it was hoped that bringing in the experienced Leto would help move them up the grid. Unfortunately for both the team and Leto, it did not. Leto retired quite a bit throughout the season, and when he did finish the race, getting into the points was still a challenge. The only real highlight of the year was a 5th place finish towards the end of the season at Surface Paradise, while Leto did add an additional top 10 finishes at Rio, Gateway, Vancouver, and Houston. In total, Leto scored 25 points, which was good enough for just 20th in the standings, and moved on to compete in the American Le Mans series over the next few years for some of the most successful years of his racing career. This next one had a bit of a longer career in IndyCars, and that would be Shinji Nakano. He raced in Formula 1 in 1997 and 1998 with Prost and Minardi, and in 2000 he moved over to kart to drive for Walker Racing to replace Joe DeFerrin, who had departed to Penske. He put in a solid result of the season opener at Homestead with 8th, but struggled for most of the rest of the season, only matching the 8th again near the end of the year at Houston, and his only other points in the season came at Portland with an 11th place finish. He then moved to Fernandez Racing in 2001 along team owner Adrian Fernandez, and once again had a difficult year with a season best finish of 8th again, this time at his home race in Motegi, and just one other top 10 finish with a 9th in Toronto. He scored a total of 11 points in the season, which placed him 26th in the championship, which was the worst of any of the full-time drivers, but he still remained with the team in 2002. Results as a whole weren't strong again, but he did have a strong pair of races mid-season. He placed a then-career best fifth in Chicago, and then did one better than that with a fourth at the next race in Toronto. He had a few other results towards the back of the top 10 throughout the year, and ended up 17th in the standings with Mario Dominguez being the only full-time driver to place lower in the championship. The team went down to his sole car for just Fernandez in 2003, leaving Nakano without a ride, but he did compete at Motegi in the Indy 500 with Beck Motorsports finishing in 11th and 14th in what would be the final races of his IndyCar career. PK Racing had a bit of a revolving door for the driver in their maiden kart season in 2003, and for the last four races of the year, they hired Formula 1 veteran Mika Salo. He retired in his debut with the team at Denver, but at his second race in Miami, he put in a solid drive to finish third, giving the team their best finish of the season. He then backed that up with a fifth of the next race in Mexico City, and at the season finale at Surface Paradise, he put in his best qualifying of 10th, but only managed to finish the race in 11th. Despite the solid results in his short stint, he did not return in 2004, and spent the majority of the rest of his career competing in sports cars. Giorgio Pantano started 14 races in Formula 1 for Jordan in 2004, and he competed in even fewer races in his IndyCar career. His first stint came in 2005 when he started two races for Canassi. Darren Manning was let go mid-season, and the team brought in Jacques Lazier to race in the remaining ovals and Pantano for the two road courses at Sonoma and Watkins Glen. He was very impressive at Watkins Glen qualifying in second, and then bringing the car home in fourth, but the team opted to bring in Dan Weldon for the 2006 season. Pantano looked for a champ car ride for the 2006 season, but nothing came together, and he would eventually return to GP2 that year. He was then later rumored to return to IndyCar in 2010 with Panther Racing, but nothing came with that as well, but he did return in 2011. This time it was for the final three road course races as a replacement for Justin Wilson at Dreyer and Reinbold after he suffered a back injury. Results weren't as strong this time though with a best finish in the stint of 16th at Motegi, and in 2012 he made one final appearance returning to Canassi, this time as a replacement for the injured Charlie Kimball at Mid-Ohio. It didn't go as well as his appearances with Canassi seven years earlier, as he only qualified 24th, but did finish 14th, but it would be the final race of his IndyCar career. Enrique Bernaldi is probably best remembered for keeping David Coulthard behind him for about half the race at the 2001 Monaco Grand Prix during his brief Formula 1 career with Arrows in 2001 and 2002. He competed in some other series over the next few years, as well as having a stint with BAR as a test driver, and in 2008 he had a season in IndyCar. 
In January of that year, he signed with Rocket Sports Racing to compete in the 2008 Champ Car season. However, a month later, Champ Car and the IRL merged, and Rocket Sports did not join the Unified Series, forcing Bernaldi to look for another ride. Less than two weeks before the first race at Homestead, it was announced that Bernaldi had signed with Conquest Racing. His season started out strongly with a 5th place finish at the 2nd race in St. Petersburg, and he then followed that up with a 4th at his next race at Long Beach, but that would be the high point of the year. Conquest was a small team to begin with, and with being a champ car team that made the switch over, they really struggled to be competitive, especially on the ovals, and his best finish the rest of the year was a 15th at the Indy 500. After Watkins Glen, it was reported he nearly quit the team after being disappointed with their performance and the team was supposedly not happy with him either. He continued racing through Sonoma in which he sustained a thumb injury and was deputized by Alex Tagliani for the rest of the year and would not return in 2009, ending a disappointing and lone forgotten IndyCar season. For our most recent one, we go back to 2017 and the driver I'm talking about is Esteban Gutierrez. Gutierrez raced in Formula 1 with Sauber in 2013 and 2014, and then again in 2016 with Haas, but left the team following the end of the year. He then had a brief stint in Formula E, before making a brief stint in IndyCar. While qualifying for the Indy 500, Dale Coyne racing driver Sebastian Bourdais had a heavy incident causing injuries that forced him to miss most of the rest of the year, and for the majority of the races he was out, Coyne turned to Gutierrez to replace him. In total, he competed in seven IndyCar races, but results as a whole weren't overly impressive with a best qualifying of 12th at Mid-Ohio and a best finish of 13th which came at Iowa. Bordeaux was ready to return to the team at Gateway, leaving Gutierrez on the sidelines for the remainder of the season. There were rumors that he was looking around for a ride to compete again in 2018, but nothing came together for Gutierrez, and he has not returned to the series since. So, there are 10 Formula 1 drivers that you may have forgotten switched to IndyCar. As you can see, most of these had either a short stint or are limited to no success in their switch. Let me know how many of these you remembered, and also if you have any memories about these drivers in IndyCar. Also, I'd be interested to know if there are any drivers that you wish would have tried IndyCar over the years. Thanks for watching.